Hello, I'm Jill at Ingvid, and we have a lesson today on vocabulary connected with the family. So all the names, the family relationships, and the, the standard names, and also some informal names that are used within a family for different family members. Okay, so let's have a look. So, first of all, mother, a very important person. So mother is the standard name for mother, but within the family, uh, she might be called mum or mummy or uh, mom. Mom is a more American type of way of saying mum. We say in the UK mum, but America, in America, it's usually mom. So, and um, this one, this is a bit old fashioned mama. So if you're watching an old film that's set in the maybe 19th century, something like that, uh, the mother might be called mama, which was a bit more formal in those days, in the 19th century, in this country anyway. Um, children and parents were more formal uh, in the way they spoke to each other than, than they are now. So that's mama. And also mater, this is a funny one. Uh, this comes from the Latin word for mother, mater. Although if you're studying Latin, you might pronounce it mater rather than mater. But uh, this was a slightly jokey name uh, that um, mostly um, boys who went to private schools where they studied Latin and they were, they were living, it, they were residential schools. Uh, so um, when they came home to visit their parents, they, they would call their mother Mater and their father Pater. There's Pater there, the Latin names for mother and father. I think it was a little bit jokey um, and they're not really used so much now. Okay, so let's move on. Father is the standard word for father, but um, he could be called dad or daddy. Pop, don't ask me why, how can it change to pop? Don't know. Pop, pops. Then papa is the equivalent of mama. So those, again, that's old fashioned. 19th century, very formal, mama, mama, papa, and pater, the Latin version of it. Okay, so then we have brother. If you have a brother, um, they could be called in a very informal way, bro. Not many people use this, but some people do. Bro, short, the first three letters of brother, bro. Or bruv, bruv, brother, but bruv, like a V. That comes from the, the, the sort of London accent, the Cockney London accent, where Cockneys, instead of pronouncing TH, brother, they, they make a V sound instead, brother, brother. So that comes from that, bruv, bruv. Okay, and then a, f a female. Uh, these are called siblings, by the way. Siblings. If you have brothers and sisters, they are called siblings. So a sister, sister is the standard word. It can be shortened to sis in an informal way. Okay, then you have uncle, who could be the brother of your father or the brother of your mother. It's the same word for both. There's no difference. Maybe in some languages you have different words for that, but uncle is the brother of either your mother or your father. And there's no, as far as I know, there's no short informal um, version of uncle. But with aunt, which is the female version, 
So the sister of your mother or the sister of your father, there is, there's auntie. So you just add IE at the end, auntie. Um, and just to mention that in India, these words uncle and aunt or auntie are used as a, a term of respect. So we don't do that in, in the UK. We only use these for the actual family relative. Um, we don't, you know, if there's an older person, we wouldn't automatically call them auntie or uncle. Um, we might say, um, I don't know what you'd say, sir or madam or something, if you're being very formal, but not uncle or auntie, okay? That's in India. <laughs> uh, maybe in some other countries as well. I don't know. Please put in the comments if you know a bit more about that. Okay, so then um, nephew and niece are the next pair. This is the male version and the female version. So um, a nephew is the son of your brother or sister, okay? So if you have a brother or sister who has had some children, the brother's son or the sister's, your brother's son or your sister's son is your nephew, okay? And there's no, as far as I know, there's no informal word for that. And then the niece is the female version. So your brother's daughter or your sister's daughter is your niece, okay? So nephew and niece, male, female. Um, then you can have a cousin, and this word cousin is the same for male and female. And your cousin um, is the son or daughter of your aunt or uncle. Well, your aunt and uncle, because if, you're, uh, if your uncle has married somebody, she, the person he marries becomes your aunt, even though you're not related by blood, you're related by marriage. So your uncle's, uh, your uncle's, <laughs> this is getting difficult, your uncle's son or your uncle's daughter is your cousin or, and your aunt's son and your aunt's daughter is your cousin. So you can have lots of cousins if you have lots of uncles and aunts who have all had children. Oh, okay. So, uh, and the only sort of short informal words I know for cousin is cause or cuz, but those are a bit old fashioned. You find them in Shakespeare, which is sort of, um, 15th century, so that's quite a long time ago. That's a few hundred years ago. So cos and cuz, they're not really used very much unless people within one particular family decide to use it just in their family. Um, families sometimes develop their own, you know, family names, but those are quite old fashioned. Um, They're called archaic or old-fashioned, old, old-fashioned, old meaning that they were used in the past, but they're not really used now, okay? <clears throat> right, so then we have um, the older generation. So grandfather is the father of your father or the father of your mother. So it's going one more generation back. So your grandfather is your father's father or your mother's father. So again, there are several family informal versions for this. Grandpa 
granddad, and even gramps sometimes, very informal gramps. Not every family uses that. Again, each family decide what, which one to use. Okay, and then grandmother, who is the mother of your father or the mother of your mother. So grandmother, uh, grandma, granny, gran, nan, nana, or I've heard some people pronounce it nana, but um, I think that's a particular region that does that. So grandma, granny, gran, nan, nana, or nana. Okay. Um, then wife and husband, the wife, um, a man who marries a woman, she becomes his wife. And then the husband, a woman who marries a man, he becomes her husband, wife and husband. Okay. And then when that happens, when they get married, they, they acquire, they acquire, or they, they get um, what are called in-laws. In-laws are people who um, are then connected by marriage. So um, if a man marries a woman, she becomes his wife, and her parents her father and mother become that man's mother-in-law and father-in-law, okay? And the same applies for the wife. Um, when a woman marries a man, his father and mother become her father-in-law and mother-in-law. And for those parents, they acquire or get a son-in-law and a daughter-in-law because if their son marries a woman, that woman becomes their daughter-in-law. And if somebody, a couple's daughter marries a man, that man becomes their son-in-law. Okay. Right, so... <laughs> Then things get even more complicated if people who are married split up. They decide they don't want to be married anymore. They might get divorced. So if there's, if there's a divorce, they break up a legal break, it, break up. Um, they become divorced, so they're no longer wife and husband. They are ex-wife and ex-husband. And people sometimes refer to my ex without saying the rest of it, just my ex. So it, ex can also be used with a girlfriend or a boyfriend that you, you're no longer with, girlfriend, ex-girlfriend boyfriend, ex-boyfriend, when that relationship was in the past. So wife, ex-wife, husband, ex-husband. Okay, and then another complication. If the, the divorced couple or one of them gets married again, they get another wife or husband and if they already have children from the first marriage, uh, this word step comes in. So um, if someone whose mother and father has divorced, a young boy or girl, if their mother or father marries again, uh, they have a new mother or a new father who comes to live with them who is not related by blood, they're only related by marriage, they're the second wife or second husband of the actual parent, that is the stepfather or stepmother. 
of that child and the child is the step son or step daughter of that new um, stepmother or stepfather. So X and step are the words for that when things break up and new relationships are formed. Okay, so that's the first part of the lesson with all the vocabulary, formal and informal. Uh, we're just going to have another part of the lesson which is about family history and research into old documents where people find out more about uh, the earlier generations of their family. So we'll do that next. Okay, so let's have a look at what's called family history research. This is a very popular thing which people in the UK do, I think in lots of other countries too, to find out um, the past generations of their family, where they come from, going back hundreds of years if they can. So family history research is when people either on their computer, there, there are websites where they can find information, um, even documents that appear on the screen, very old documents which have been scanned and put onto the internet. Um, and people can find out if they don't know who their, they may know who their grandparents were, but going back any further than that, their great-grandparents or great-great-grandparents, as you go back each generation, you add the word great. So here you'd have great-grandfather, great-grandmother, um, and you add the word great for each generation. Um, so it's not so easy to know because families don't always keep information about who their, their past ancestors were. So family history research is when people look into their family history, looking at old documents. So the, the generations, the word generations are the, the different periods of the family going back. The ancestors are the, the previous people that you are descended from. So ancestors are the people in the past that you have come from. Ancestry is the, the general term, the general abstract noun for the whole idea of having ancestors. Okay, so then Descendants, those are the people now we are descended from. We are the descendants of our ancestors. We have come down from them, okay, because to descend means to come down. Um, then there's a family tree which people draw up on a big piece of paper usually, and it looks like this. So you get the branches of the tree when you have one ancestor here uh, who has some children. So the next generation comes down here. Then those children have children and it just goes on from there. Uh, so this person had two children and two children and three children and it just goes on from there. So that's a family tree with, with branches, okay? Um, so genealogy is another word for family history, really. Genealogy means knowing about who your ancestors were or finding out about it, the whole process of research. So how do you do the research? You find the official documents um, that uh, were produced as a record of people's birth when people were born. Um, 
they had a, a certificate or they, they put in a register, born or married, and then uh, another certificate for, for marriage, marriage certificate. And then when people die, there's a death certificate. So there's a lot of official documentary evidence, what's called evidence on paper, official documents, uh, which you can look at and find information about your ancestors. So official documents, uh, birth, marriage, death, certificates. Um, depending on what country you're in, there are different um, sort of procedures for this. Some go back many, many years. In the UK, uh, these certificates go back to about the 1830s. So people started having a lot of documents around that period, 1830s. Um, before then, um, it was up to the churches to keep a parish register. So if, if a, a baby was born and then they had then a baptism or a christening when the baby was a few days old, that, that would be written in the church register, the parish register. Then when a couple got married in the church, their wedding details would be written into the parish register, an official book that was kept there. And if somebody died and they, they, were, they had a funeral service and a burial, again, that would go into the parish register. So parish registers go back much further than these certificates. So it's possible to find in the UK going back to about the 16th or 15th, no, 16th century, I think. So, and also from the parish registers, there's a very useful index. Um, it's called the IGI, International Genealogical Index, which has been put together by the Mormon church who have a particular interest in family history. So that's very useful because not everybody can go to a church and ask to see the parish register. So the Mormon church have taken a lot of information from parish registers and they've put it all on one index, which is now available on microfiche and on a digital um, recording uh, CDs and also on the internet. So there's a lot of information on the internet now that maybe 10 or 20 years ago wasn't available. So it's a lot easier now to find this information. Just sometimes you have to pay a subscription to be able to get the information. It's not all available free. Okay, so um, that's all the documents you can find and lots of, lots of other documents too. Uh, and finally, there's a, a fairly new thing available, which is a DNA test, um, which uh, is a scientific analysis. Um, I think you have to put some uh, saliva from your mouth. Um, from your mouth, you have to spit into a tube uh, and put it in a tube and send it off for analysis, your DNA, your own particular chemical uh, makeup, and you get your results back and they tell you what percentage of ancestry you have, whether you come from uh, Africa or Asia or different countries in Europe, East and West, uh, Scandinavia, uh, North America, South America, all different parts of the world, uh, you can find that you have different percentages of your DNA uh, based on who your ancestors were and where they came from. So people sometimes are quite surprised to find that they have quite a mixture of DNA. 
they may have been born in England in this country and they think they're just English and then they find they have a bit of Irish ancestry, a bit from Scandinavia, a bit from Spain or Italy uh, or even further away than that. So it's very interesting. You have to pay a fee for that, but it's interesting to know at some point in your life uh, what your DNA is and where you've come from. Okay, so I hope that's been um, an interesting subject for you and taught you some uh, new vocabulary. So do go to the website ingvid.com where there's a, a quiz on this subject. And thanks for watching and see you again soon. Okay, bye for now.